Okay, this video is about how do I know which statistical test to use and what are the different parts of a test. So, um, let's do this through an example. Let's say I have an example of a table of raw data right here, table of raw data. And this data is about the tree heights that I obtained from, let's say, that I measure from Chenting Dao Street and the Winchai Street. I measure 10 trees, and I wanted to know whether or not the trees are of different heights. Um, I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Every time you have a table, raw table or process table, make sure you have the same number of decimal for all of your measurements. So you can see here's, there's two decimal here, but this uh, is only one. It's also this one is only one. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to highlight it. Um, go over to home here and see this button? That ought to fix it. Oops, sorry. There you go. Two decimal for everything. Good? All right. So I don't know which test to use. So I'm going to go to this flow chart of what statistical test I should use. So does my result contain some kind of quantitative measurements? Sure does. It's contained the height of the tree, right? So yes, I should use a t-test or an ANOVA test. Now how many groups of data do I have? Well, it looks like I have two groups. I have a group that is on Chenheng Dao Street and then I have a group that is on Winchai Street. Okay, so I'm going to go down this way. I have two groups. So that's mean I need to use a t-test. I need 10 trials for each group. Oof, do I have 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, great! I have exactly 10 samples in this group, so I could do a t-test. Wonderful! Now, when you design an experiment, make sure you keep this number in mind so that you have enough sample to do statistical tests, okay? If you're going to do a t-test because you have two groups, make sure you have 10 trials each. If you're going to do an ANOVA test because you have three or more groups, make sure you have five trials each and at least three or more group. All right. So what does a t-test look like on an IA? Okay, I happen to have some of the example over here. Ah, way too big. Ah, okay. Here you go. So I have an example of the t-test over here. I have an example of a chi-square test uh, and linear regression uh, also a test. Now if you just skim through this e example, you notice something. All have this neural hypothesis, alternative hypothesis. And then again, neural hypothesis, alternative. So there's a pattern here. Whenever you do a test, a statistical test, you should set up some neural hypothesis and alternative hypothesis and then show the formula for it and then do the calculation and then a conclusion. So essentially three part for a test. Part one, do some kind of introduction with the neural hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. This part right here. Part two, the actual calculation with the formula and part three a conclusion of what your result mean is your test so a significant difference or is it not